Hi kids. Today's video is on a very important subject for me. And that is anxiety, agoraphobia, and OCD. Wee! And how I learn to control it and live a full life. All throughout my 20s and up until my late 30s, I suffered from panic attacks, agoraphobia, and debilitating OCD. Let's start with anxiety. My anxiety was so bad, I was having panic attacks all day, all night, and I stayed home all the time. So that made my agoraphobia, well, it developed agoraphobia because I was too scared to go out of the house. Now my OCD, God, that was so bad at the time that I was doing rituals like making the bed for hours to make sure it was totally smooth and perfect. And I would undo it and then redo it and undo it and redo it. And this would go on for hours. I would do the same with my makeup. I would do my makeup, wash my face again, do my makeup, wash my face again, the same with my hair. And so I was stuck at home all the time because I couldn't get out of the house. I was always a creative person, but I didn't know how to harness my energy to work on creative projects instead of these rituals that I had to do. Growing up, I had zero self-confidence. I can remember since my, my first memories, I had no confidence. I was always the chubby kid and I was always the kid that thought and did things outside the box and so I wasn't accepted and I was painfully shy. I was painfully shy. So of course, you know, I was bullied because I was meek and strange and I didn't have designer clothes and I didn't care about that kind of stuff. So yeah, I was picked on and I was bullied. My nickname in a lot of grade school was Gravy Train. And if you don't know what that is, it's a brand of dog food. Woof. Don't they know I'm a cat? So needless to say, my childhood in school wasn't great. But out of school, it was good because I was creative at home and my mom was an artist too. And so she taught us to do creative things. She forced us to go outside, which I thank now because it forced me to be creative in ways with different kind of materials like outside and stuff. And then in high school, when I became punk and death rock and stuff, you know, in the 80s, that was a brand new thing. And so you can imagine the fun times getting screamed at, walking down the street to school and stuff. But, oh, and being kicked, actually kicked in the butt by kids at school. Being bullied isn't a fun time and it does not help your confidence. But when you get older and you realize that you survived through those times, your confidence builds. Wow, hey, you know, I've had people throw cupcakes at me and kick me in the ass and scream things at me, but I'm here today and I'm pretty proud of the person that I've become. So jump to my 20s, about 28, when my daughter was about two, three. Now she's about two, because she's 25 now, yeah. I had gotten quite large because my anxiety was so bad, I was terrified to even move. 
I was scared that if I got off the couch, my I would have a heart attack. And then so I would just sit and eat and watch TV and watch my daughter and play with my daughter. Then I got larger and larger and larger and then my confidence went down and down and down more. And then there was the day that I got so bad I called 911. And I had a living room full of firemen come in and they pretty much just told me straight out, it's just an anxiety attack and you're okay because I thought I was having a heart attack because at that point I had gotten so large I was afraid I was 330 pounds maybe more but the scale only went up to 330 so I really don't know and I was terrified I was gonna have a heart attack because I couldn't even walk without sweating I couldn't get upstairs you know because I was had led such a sedentary life that's another video I'm going to be doing about my weight loss journey and what that actually did to my life. Because that, that is the thing that gave me confidence. I saw a psychiatrist, he gave me medicine, and that for me personally did not work. I found myself wanting to jump out of windows and wanting to open car doors when they were driving and not sleeping and sleeping too much when I was on medication. So that for me, it was a no. And I quit cold turkey because I'm the type of person that just wants to do everything myself. Now I'm not saying this about everyone. I know there's going to be comments and I'm reading them now saying, but it's not me, I'm not like that. And I totally understand that. Not everyone can do it without medicine because some people have that chemical imbalance that needs to be balanced out with medicine and that's, that's totally okay. After having all the firemen in my house, that was completely humiliating for me. And something clicked in my head it literally clicked that day. I can't be like this anymore. I get heart palpitations and I'm ha I've had them since my daughter was born. And that's what started my anxiety attacks, especially when I was larger. But I've had halter monitors. I've worn them for weeks at a time. And every time they tell me that my heart is fine, I just have this little quirk and I'm still alive 30 years later, obviously, so, and I do get checked every once in a while still, and I'm, it's still cooking. The day I decided to change my life is first I started to, decided I wanted to lose weight, and I started exercising five minutes as much as I could, and I changed my diet. But as I started losing weight, I started to feel better about myself and I got more confidence. And I learned to control my, what I was eating, but at the same time, I started to learn to control other aspects of my life. We don't have heroes that tell our kids anymore that you can do what you want to do in life. You can take control you can change things. I had Richard Simmons, who I love Richard Simmons, and I love Jack LaLanne, and I just have always listened to what they had to say. And so I would use that in these other issues of my life. I went to cognitive therapy, which is a therapy that forces you to face your fears. So, like take for instance, I was terrified of driving, even though I had to drive my daughter to school every day and pick her up, I was like white knuckling it all the way. Oh God, I'm gonna die. So the therapist had me drive, you know, 10 minutes every day. And at the time, it didn't work for me. I'd say I was about 30 by then, 32 or so. And it didn't work for me, but, but it's because I didn't want it to work. I think in the back of my head, I didn't want it to work. 
that is something that I admit because I was at home and I didn't have to do anything except for take care of my daughter and I took care of the house. I mean, not saying that's not a job because I still do that today on top of everything else and it's a job. I was fine not having to go out of the house. It is actually very comfortable to stay in that deep hole because it's less work to stay where you're at and less scary than to try to change. I look at life like you're continually trying to push your boulder up the, to the top of the hill. And right now in my life, I have the boulder at the top of the hill. I'm gonna try not to cry. That's not gonna be successful. But sometimes that boulder starts to slip. And I stand there with my hands up and my feet on the ground and I'm not gonna let that boulder slip back again because my life is amazing compared to what it used to be. No ugly crying. <laughs> I've gone from having daily, nightly anxiety attacks to maybe one or two a year. And that's through facing my fears, doing things for me that was terrifying. One of the terrifying things was making friends because I wasn't good at it as a kid. So when the internet popped up, I just started talking to whoever I could. And I met some friends online and we became a nice tight group. And that was super cool, you know? And so with learning that I can make friends too, I also started doing my artwork and I started my pocket full of posies and I would share them with my friends and they were enjoying it. So that was a confidence booster too. So it, you know, I, I just kept getting built up and built up and I started taking risks. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I just knew in the back of my mind, this is where I wanted to be in life. When Hot Topic asked me if I wanted to have shirts and stickers and dolls and stuff in their store, I was like, uh, uh, okay. But I was terrified. I didn't know the first thing about how to provide stuff for a store, you know. I was just doing these rinky-dink little characters. But I asked a heck of a lot of questions. And gee, that works, because you get answers. I got separated from my daughter's husband and then, you know, I met my husband and that was another confidence booster because he is cute. He's cute. And I'm an old lady. Talk about a confidence booster. Getting a man 11 years younger than you. Wow, 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 wee. Life is anything but easy. So for me, one of the things I would always tell myself is that somebody out there has it worse than me and that I don't have any right to sit here and feel sorry for myself. There had to be a point where I decided it was time for me to stop being a victim of myself, a victim of my bad choices. One of the main things that I would always tell myself it, when I was having an anxiety attack is that I'm lived through the last one, so I'm gonna live through this one. You have anxiety, the chemicals in your 
body go nuts. The fight or flight response. And that's when your body just wants to get the hell out of Dodge because something's going down. So that rush that you're feeling is chemical and it makes you sweat and it makes your heart race and it makes your, you can't think clearly. What I started doing was playing video games. Tomb Raider is my absolute favorite video game and I've been playing it for 20 years. And Laura Croft helped save my life too. Because when I was in the middle of a panic attack, I would gather enough strength to go over and start playing Tomb Raider or Tetris. Because what you want to do is you want to get your brain off of those spiraling thoughts or you're just gonna keep having panic attacks over and over and over again. There are ways out of this, but you have to be willing to work at it. This took me years, but don't think about it as, oh my God, I can't take years to do this, but why? Why don't you have years to make yourself better than you are? We're always striving to be better than we are, and you know that having anxiety is not what you want to be doing for the rest of your life. I started to create more and more because that started to fill the void. Instead of having daily panic attacks, I was now thinking about what my next project would be. I still have anxiety, I still have agoraphobia, and I still have OCD, but, and I have other things too many 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 things but i'm i learned how to control them and turn them around and use them for good ocd if you can learn to switch it around so you are actually obsessing about things that you need to be obsessing about then it could be used for good I began to use my OCD for good by thinking about what is my next project? What am I doing next to expand my own horizons? I know that there are people that think that this isn't helping them. What I, my experience is not gonna help them, but that's okay. So there's really no need to leave that kind of a comment because I just will read it and be like, all right, well, it might not be helping you, but it's helping that guy over there or it's helping that woman over there. I just have tunnel vision and I just keep on working for my what I want in life. I may not look like a supermodel, but I can paint. <laughs> I would suggest anyone that is suffering to try to get help. Um, if you want to try to do it yourself, look at, through YouTube and look online for self-help because I wish that was going on when I was younger. If the people around you aren't supportive, just you need to get that tunnel vision and you need to focus on your own life. I know what it's like to go through anxiety. It's H-E double hockey sticks. I know how scary it is. I know how hard it is and that you don't think you can do it, but I want to be your cheerleader because you can do it. Some people assume because I have things that I want in my life now that I was not that bad. I was bad. Life sucked. But it's because I didn't have control. I didn't have control. I have control now because I realize that there's no one in this world that's going to ever open up your brain and give you the answers. It's always just going to be you. You have to physically, oh, there's something floating in front of my face. 
you have to make the change and you can do it. You can do it. I still have my moments when I feel like I'm in a funk and I'm not doing enough. And then I kind of get anxious because I want to keep doing as much as I can until I die. I mean, I'm 50 years old. Life goes so fast. I was just 20. If you're constantly thinking in your head, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. This is it. This is it. You are not making anything better. You're just going to keep it going and keep it spiraling. Sometimes it literally feels like you're physically doing work because it's mentally painful to change. So you want to change the tape in your head to say things like, okay, I've had anxiety before and I'm not dead. I had an attack this bad and I'm still here. Even though you want someone to drive you to the ER and you are getting ready to go to the ER, but you're staying back because you know in the back of your head you've survived this before. That was a long sentence. Try to change that tape in your head, you know? Life is beautiful. Life is wonderful. And I want to experience it as much as I can. Use other people as examples and listen to what they have to say. Um, that, that's another lesson I've learned. Realize that you don't know the answers to everything and that putting your ego aside and listening to what other people have been through and how they are handling it is a huge part of learning how to get through life easier. I have uh, someone that I look up to immensely talk amongst yourselves okay my husband Matthew has been through more than any one person should go through in his in some in life he's lost so much and now he's facing a disease that we don't know the outcome but we live day to day like as much as we can happy being happy I'm going to have him do a video sometime about his journey and how the hell this man can go through what he's been through and wake up with a smile on his face every day These are the people that you learn from. Oh God, ugly cry. These are the people that you learn from. Oh, now I messed up my makeup. Ugh. Well, that ugly cry messed up my makeup. Now on my quest to try to get my life to where I want it to be, it hasn't always been smooth sailing at all. It's been quite difficult. Make the call to a therapist or someone that you think that can help you with every first step that you feel like you need to take, but do it because you can do it. You can totally change your life. I've always tried to, you know, encourage other people to make changes and be more positive. I may be a kook, but when it comes to this, I am one gazillion times serious. No, I, I am so serious about how, how your life can change for the better. 
but you need to keep pushing that boulder up the hill. Do it. You can do it. Life is really fun if you let yourself have fun. Like I was saying before, once I stopped being a victim of myself, then more opportunities opened up for me. Saying yes to everything, well, you know, not everything, but everything that you want to do even though you're afraid, jump in with both feet. That's how I started my career. I've had, I've been written up saying that I'm just a lousy housewife crafter. And I cried for a couple days and then I was like, well, the heck with that. No, I'm not. And so I just kept doing what I do. And I'm still here doing what I do. Now, I do have a fear that I'm not over yet, but I'm going to be working on it and I have to work on it fast. I want to go to Versailles. I want to go to Paris, but I'm terrified to fly over the ocean. I'm going to start crying again. I went to Vegas once and it was only a 20 minute flight. And it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. It was like being on a roller coaster. And then I looked down and I saw the shadows on the ground that the clouds made. And I was amazed. I was like, oh, that's shade. But it was only 20 minutes. And I want to go to Versailles. I want to be in the wonders of Versailles. I want to go to Germany because my sister lives in Germany. I want to go to Hawaii because my brother lives in Hawaii. But I have to go fly in a tube over the water. But if I don't do it, I'm going to regret it. I don't want to be 80 and I don't want to regret seeing the things that I want to see in life. So I'm going to go on YouTube and I'm going to find all the videos about flying in planes and how to get over fear of flying that I can because I don't want to stay in America my whole life. I want to go to France. I want to go to the UK. I want to experience other wonders of the world. I don't want to just be in America. Ugh. Do the pat, do the pat, and the wave. I'm the person that I always wanted to be, that it was in the back of my head. But like the song says, nowhere girl you're living in a dream and I put myself in a self-imposed exile so start pushing your boulder up the hill because once you get it to the top and you learn to control all of your fears and all of your little quirks and all of your disorders Life can be amazing. There are people with mental disorders that absolutely need medication and that should absolutely be done. But even if you have disorders, you can work through them and you could use them for good. I'm hoping that this can help at least one person because that's all that needs to happen. If it's not going to help you and if it pisses you off, who cares? Just move on to something else. You keep those thoughts in your head. No one likes me. I'm never going to be anything. My life sucks. You're creating this negative energy that's all around you and it just goes everywhere with you and people can feel it i can feel it i'm an empath and i don't care if you don't believe in being an empath or that kind of stuff but i can feel your feelings when i'm around you so that's why i need to go escape to places like the mountains to feel wide open spaces where i'm not feeling everybody's crap so when you start thinking more positive 
your barrier becomes more open and more people feel more welcome to be around you. And that's how you make friends. You also make friends by smiling and, you know, not being a jerk. I'm not cool. And I don't care. I'm not. I'm just trying to be who I want to be in life. And I really don't care if you don't like me. And that's the power. That's my power that I got back. I get emotional because I'm a Pisces. So I'm one of those crazy, whoo hoo always thinking. And there goes my, oh, there goes my makeup. So I guess the video's over. Because <laughs> I don't want to fix it again. <laughs> So thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to hear more of me going blah, blah, blah and watching my clown. There goes my clown makeup. Oh, now I should be in a video for littering.